guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be attempting to try to repot all of my indoor house plants. I did a ton of research while I was sick to try to see the best fixtures for each type of plant and I really want to make sure that they all last because for some reason I've been having really bad luck. The spider plant that used to thrive is now looking like this and it's down to just a few a few leaves this one might not survive actually but upon doing all that research i realized i'm doing pretty much everything wrong when it comes to my plant to try to do right by them and i got this amazing new plant as well that i really want to try to keep alive you can like when i repot it you might be able to see better it's like velvety leaves so gorgeous and then i also got this one pink on it soil for a tropical house plant because I have a few sphagnum moss I don't know if I'm saying that correctly it's just like a fertilizer for plants all right without further ado let's try and repot these plants you can come like sit down with me yeah so, so no for so I wasn't filming <laughs> basically what's going on is Lily took the bad soil off of this coffee bean plant. And that's all the bad soil. It was like outdoor potting soil. And she kept some of the rocks um, and put them back in the pot for irrigation things or something. Drainage. Drainage. And now she's putting peat moss and uh, volcan volcanic rock, or what is it? Volcanic yeah. rocks. <laughs> the rocks or the volcanic rock to give it some moisture. We put in the plant trail mix. Yummy. This that I got. I don't know. The peat moss. I did a lot of research so hopefully this works for it. I really want it to start to one day grow. possibly some coffee. Coffee beans. Okay. I won this from when I was working at Starbucks. Random. I don't know where they even got it. They got one for the store too and then it like died immediately. So that's why I feel like I'm chosen to make yeah. this one loom. What was the contest? Or... Oh, it was just partner of the corner. Oh. So some of these leaves look bad. I'm gonna rip those off. After, I'm done. After that one video, it looks like they're like perky and up, you know, like how they're supposed to, not like sad and droopy. Yeah, but some of them are singed. What does that mean? See how some of them have brown? The tips, yeah. I don't want that, so I'm gonna get rid of that. I see. Two gallon pot. So this is not two gallons. That's probably like what? A quarter of a gallon? Half yeah. A gallon? I have no idea. So let's just do a sprinkle in here. This is like slow release fertilizer stuff. That's apparently really, really good for them. Every time you water, it will release the, the fertilizer mm. for indoor house plants, and you don't have you only have to like add more every few months. So that's why I chose this one, and it was not that bad of a deal too. All the supplies though costed um a pretty penny, eighty dollars total, mm. which I feel like isn't bad. Yeah, because I have a lot of different climates that I had to shop for, so if I have like 
one kind, I feel like it would have been easier. Yeah. I'm not even going to do much footage for this one because I ended up repotting it and then in the same pot and then finding an even smaller pot later that suited it better. So I repotted it here originally with better soil and then later on in the video you'll see I transported or I transplanted it into a really tiny pot. Now I'm going to be doing my favorite plant which is this pink and green one. This is called the an assorted Fetonia, and I was really worried about putting it in this red pot that I bought for it because it didn't have any drainage holes at the bottom, so I really wanted to ensure that there was going to be optimal drainage for it because this plant is pretty sensitive, so I added a ton of the lava rocks at the bottom. There's a really beautiful up-close shot. This one is just so gorgeous. I saw so many pictures of this plant online on like Pinterest and Instagram before and I just saw it at like my local co-op on the shelf randomly or it wasn't my local co-op. I was in like a city over at their co-op and it was randomly there for really cheap so yeah I'm putting the rocks at the bottom and then I'm taking some of this moss and putting it at the bottom because I really want to be sure that this doesn't get root rot or anything since there isn't and since there aren't any drainage holes and then I took the plant and packed it in with some of that plant trail mix a lot of peat moss and some indoor potting soil yeah I really hope I can keep this one alive because it's one of my most favorite plants I think I've ever owned and I'm just so eager to learn more about all of these little planties and their little planty needs. So I don't really know what's going on with these zip ties. I don't know. I got this on offer up so the older that gal that I got this from she was selling a lot of these so I feel like she was propagating her plants so maybe she like combined two of them. Two separate Whoa. plants. Who's it looks like it looks like a little baby. I'm thinking of the Harry Potter yeah, scene. Like, wait, it totally looks like a baby with its legs and its arm and its body. Oh my god. <laughs> what are those things called in Harry Potter? Mandrake. Yeah. So this is the bigger one. Okay, I decided to do a voiceover for this part because Alan was my filmer and he wasn't feeling too good and so you're hearing like a lot of sniffles throughout but yeah, basically the lady that I had bought this plant from, she had propagated two plants and for this particular kind of plant, the Anthurium crystallinium, I put the name at the beginning of this video. But she had actually given me two plants, which is really awesome, and so I decided to find two smaller pots so that I could start growing them in separate pots. So hopefully I eventually have two really big ones of these guys because I love them. I think it's one of my favorite plants that I have right now. I wanted to do different mixtures for each house plant. I think I ended up using pretty much all of the different types of mixes for the soil in each plant, but just different ratios. This one I added a lot of the tropical mix, and yeah, I know that this one is supposed to stay super moist, and so I wanted to add some moss on there to make sure that I was giving it the essential moisture it needed and I, I had an indicator of kind of when I needed to water it. So exciting! I know, I can't wait to see these ones really happy. Yeah. I feel like the smaller containers will help a lot. It came damaged yeah. on the leaf like that, so hopefully that was just from like a tear or something and yeah. not a bigger issue. And here I'm just starting the next pot for the smaller Anthurium. 
I added some of the lava rocks on the bottom for irrigation, some of that moss to keep it not too wet and not too dry. I'm adding more of the potting soil, keeping everything pretty moist as I'm repotting here. Some of that trail mix. And all of the products that I purchased for this video I got on Amazon. I'm sure you could find them at like a plant store. I just didn't have one nearby and I kind of ordered them while I was ill and couldn't leave the house. But yeah. And then I took this tiny little guy. You can see Samson in the background. So cute. And I just planted him in there. This repotting situation was harder and easier than I thought it would be. It definitely took a lot more time, but I feel like it's really worth it. Oh, I think I forgot to mention, for these specific plants too, you're supposed to keep them in a smaller container until they outgrow it, and so that's why I am transplanting them into smaller containers. So hopefully it gives them a higher chance of survival. Then I'm just handing it off to Alan to put it in the shower with the rest of the plants. And now on to my problematic snake plant. I'm snipping the support that I was using previously to hold this guy up. And as you can see, the soil for some reason was getting so brittle and just kind of collecting on top. I don't know if it was the city tap water that I was using that was messing with the soil if you guys have any idea please let me know any of you plant people if i'm doing something wrong please let me know because i just want to i just want to do right by them and learn as much as i can i'm very much a beginner and i'm excited for this journey and so i'm welcoming all different kinds of minds and knowledge at this point i realized that it did not look like how it should, I think, possibly root rot, and so they looked pretty dehydrated, so I decided to take it and put it in some treated water to try to revive it. I'm going to keep it in there for most of the day and check on it later on and maybe replant it tomorrow or sort of decide if it's worth saving. Now I'm working on this bad boy. I have no idea what kind of plant this even is. I tried to search it online and found a couple different answers. If any of you know what it is, please let me know in the comments. A friend gave it to me when she was moving away and I've had it for about a year now, maybe a little less than a year. It started this little new baby growth, so I feel like it's not unhappy, but definitely has the wrong soil because from the research I did, I know for sure that it, I'm pretty sure it's from a tropical location. So I'm going to just like dump out the whole thing and try to repot it. The root system on this one was pretty crazy. It was smaller than I thought it would be, but really interesting how it was like a circular shape. I found a lot of the roots grew like that. I'm adding in some of the rock just for a little bit of extra irrigation. Again, just mixing pretty much all of them in. Adding the remaining of this trail mix that I had. Very fibrous. It's mostly for tropical plants and it listed some like orchids and stuff like that but all the ones that I looked up that looked the most similar to this one said that the soil would be best for them. I just mixed in some more of that peat moss stuff and now I'm adding some of this. I feel like the purpose of this is just to be an indicator for when things need to be watered. Like if the moss dries out, it's time to be watered, and if you put it towards the bottom of the pot, then it like sucks up the moisture so it prevents root rot. Here I was trying to fill this and then just decided it'd be best if I go a little ham and shaky shaky on her, but 
I really hope this helps this plant out because a lot of the leaves had brown on the tips and it just did not look like it was doing good. It looks better in this video than it did even a couple days ago because I did some pretty heavy pruning on it to get all of the unhealthy leaves off. It came to me like that, so I feel like whatever I was doing was okay for it, but I just want to give it the best life and the best nutrients that it needs. And there's Samson looking adorable again in the background. I love him. He's sleeping on me while I record this right now. Yeah, I've just put in that cool root system in there. I was debating on whether or not I wanted to keep that support stick in because I didn't really feel like it needed it, but then... After a while, I decided, you know, it wouldn't hurt, <laughs> so I put it back in there. Now I'm repotting this tiny, cutie, little succulent that my friend Nat made for- not made, they propagated it for me, and Alan's delivering it to the wash tub. That was the easiest one to replant. I wish they were all that tiny. Now, the hardest one of all to get out of the pot was the spider plant. My grandma actually propagated this one originally for me, and it just took off and was amazingly healthy. My old spider plant used to look like this, but even bigger, so you can see why I'm pretty shook that it's so unhealthy right now, but... Yeah, this one was hard to get out because it was a glass jar and the lip of the jar was smaller than the interior of it, so to try to get it through was pretty difficult. The root system on this one was absolutely crazy. The roots were fibrous looking, they looked so fuzzy, and instead of doing a circle because this was in a square pot, the roots did a square shape at the bottom of the root system, which I thought was so cool. And now I'm just trying to get all of the old soil gently out of there. And wow, just look at that root system. Plants are so cool. I'm so impressed by this one. The spider plants have a really interesting root formation. It looks like she didn't really have drainage in that one either. So I'm guessing spider plants don't need much drainage, but I am going to just give it the rest of this to be safe. I don't know. I feel like drainage is good for all plants. Now, at this point, I was out of, like, all of my other dirt pretty much. So, I'm just using this standard indoor potting soil and wetting it. I'm really hoping that I'm able to propagate some of my own spider plants here in the future. I did have to get rid of quite a few of these leaves because they were either just had damage from our move or the plant was getting too out of control for the pot or like during this replanting process some of them got ruined so it is a bit more sparse than before, but I definitely feel like I'll be able to, within the next couple of months, probably begin to propagate my own spider plants. At this point, I finished with all of them, and this is how they turned out. I washed them in the shower to clean the pot off and to clean the plants off. I ended up putting these on a little dish to make sure that the pots didn't damage anything because they are just like a planter's pot so they have no dish underneath them. And here was the coffee plant after taking off the damaged leaves. Looks so much healthier and nicer. Here's the full setup with all of them. And then the little damaged guy. I do hope to get more in the future. I just want to see how these guys do and if I can keep them all alive and thriving. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any tips or 
anything that you want to share with me about plants, your favorite plants maybe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks, bye!